What's up, guys? Uh, this is Vico, I guess. Is that my stage name? I guess it's my stage name now. Why not? Uh, I'm going to make a video review here of uh, Where Have All the Carpenters Gone by The Honest, uh, the Honest Carpenter. Great guy. Check him out. Fun channel. So I'm going to tell you this story. I don't tell a lot of stories on this channel, but I'm going to tell you this one because I think it's important. A couple years ago, I lived in this apartment and they started building a seven house development across the street. The lot graders came in and cleared out the lot and they were followed by a little asphalt and concrete company that put in the driveways and a little side street. The foreman on that job was an old guy from the Louisiana Bayou. He was Cajun, he had this amazing accent. He always used to joke with me because I was in construction too. And he always called me boss. And we would chat and swap stories before I got my truck to go to work in the morning. If I had to guess, he was probably pushing 70. There was only two or three guys on his crew and they all seemed to be in the 40s and 50s. So one morning I came out and he was on the job site all by himself. He was down on his hands and knees and he was troweling out a concrete apron. He didn't see me, but I noticed that when he stood up, it looked like he was in pain. He put his hand on his hip and he just didn't seem as happy as usual to be on the job site. I felt bad for him. And when I went by, he saw me and I said, man, you gotta get a young guy to do that for you. And he looked right at me and he said, there ain't no more young guys, boss. And that really stuck with me because looking around my professional world, I realized that he was right. There's a real problem forming and it doesn't get talked about as much as it should because I don't think people realize that we're on the precipice of what could be a real crisis. And we're probably not gonna acknowledge it until we go over the edge. So today I wanna to try to slow things down a little bit and talk about what's really at stake here. And I'm gonna to try to answer the question that people ask me every week. Where have all the carpenters gone? So the truth is, I haven't actually worked in the field doing the day-to-day -day labor as a carpenter in about a year now. The channel blew up in early 2020 and it changed my life in a lot of ways. One of them is that it pays me now and I don't necessarily have to wear the tool belt anymore. But oddly enough, that's not what pulled me out of the construction field. In fact, I wouldn't have even started a YouTube channel if it wasn't for this other thing. Somewhere in about 2018, I began to develop this fairly serious knee problem. I had plowed up a bunch of cartilage on the back of my right kneecap and it was making a lot of things very agonizing. Not only was manual labor painful, but some days just standing in line to get a cup of coffee was enough to make me break out in a cold sweat. And it's no mystery to me how this happened. I've been working construction on and off since I was 13. So at 36, I had 20 plus years of crawling in basements, climbing up on ladders and roofs, and carrying heavy materials around. On top of that, I've been working completely alone for the last 10 years. Wow, okay. Um, I have never related so hard before. I'm in my mid-20s with the same story. I've been working hard since I was old enough to swing a hammer. Uh, now, I'm not quite a carpenter. I'm a general contractor. Uh, I, I do specialize in carpentry, but I've done my fair share of roofing, concrete work, uh, low-key, a little bit of plumbing, electrical, HVAC. Um, uh, I'm not certified, though. <clears throat> my, my, my knee's in back. <sighs> Freaking, they hurt. I'm, I'm in pain. I'm in pain. Years. So all the manual labor on a job site fell on me. Now, these things aren't uncommon. That's just part of construction. They call it manual labor for a reason. And the truth is, I love being a carpenter. You get to be outside all day, which is where I'm happiest. You build things that are standing there when you drive away. And every day is different and it's rewarding. But it turns out, I just didn't have the sort of knees that we're gonna get. 100% dude, this is why I chose general contracting as my profession. I love the variety, I love the challenge of seeing a complicated task from its humble beginnings as a hole in the ground to its finished form as a whole house. It's, 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 it's my favorite, I love it. Get me to 70 in the field, like my friend from Louisiana. In fact, it looked like they weren't even going to get me to 40 if I didn't do something quick. So out of desperation, I started a YouTube channel. And it somehow grew to almost 300,000 subscribers in about three years. That's so I'm barely even a channel. I got a small series based on a backpack design. Uh, ended abruptly due to an accident and poor planning. Uh, I have a few videos of me fanboying over some tools. Uh, there's there's the singing videos, but let's not get too crazy here. Uh, if, if you want a video about my backpack design, like an explanation to how I almost died, uh, be sure to like and subscribe. If I get some crazy number, like a thousand subscribers, I'll continue the video series. Uh, it's not going to happen, but let's see. As far as I'm concerned, it defies all explanation. 
But this is my job now, and I try to take it seriously and I try to do it well. And yet every week, without fail, I still get calls from old clients or would-be new clients asking if I can do work for them. And I have to tell them, I'm out. I had knee surgery, I had to stop. They always say, oh God, we're sorry to hear that. Do you know anybody else who does good carpentry? And the crazy thing is, I don't have a single name anymore of someone that I can recommend in the area. Not one. I'm a carpenter and I don't know any other good independent carpenters. How does that happen? Okay, so like, I agree wholeheartedly here. Any schmuck can do general contracting. At the end of the day, our main job is to be, we're experienced laborers. Well, okay, we're, we're supposed to be at least. Um, often you find guys or gals that attempt things they're just not qualified to do. And because of this, you often get things like, uh, well, I don't know, this, that, or even this. I'm not going to lie and say I know how to do everything and anything. I'm 25 years old. I'm young. Uh, that's an, it's an impossible feat. But circling back to my earlier point, our main job is supposed to be experienced labor. Uh, I've, I've, if I've never formed a concrete slab, I'm hiring somebody that has. If, if I've never framed a load-bearing wall, I'm, I'm hiring someone with the necessary experience to work alongside me and ensuring the job is done properly. Now, because I've been in this industry for so long, I can safely say I know enough to charge top dollar for my industry. Uh, like carpentry, a GC in my area charges anywhere between 30 to 100 bucks an hour uh, compared, to electricians and <coughs> compared to electricians and plumbers, I make next to nothing. I mean, it's no mystery that trade participation is down. And I'm talking across the board, across the country, at all times. I'm not going to get into a lot of hard statistics because there are already a lot of other organizations and publications out there that are heavily researching this stuff. Like my friend Misha Fisher, who is the chief economist for Angie's List and Home Advisor. I'll link some of his stuff below, as well as some other journals and publications that talk about these things. But these reports have been saying for years now what most everyone already knows on some level. Young people aren't going into the trades as much. They're getting four-year degrees, they're going to work for corporations and tech companies. From what I've read, something like 75% of contractors across industries have said that the shortage is preventing them from taking on more work and growing. The average age of trade workers is constantly getting older and the younger pool is shrinking. This is hard fact and it's hitting every corner at once. And yet, from my point of view, not all trades are experiencing this equally. When my old clients call and they need the name of a good carpenter, I got nothing to offer. But if they ask me for a plumber or an electrician or an HVAC specialist, I can throw out 10 names. They could have someone good at their door that afternoon to give them a bid or possibly even start doing work. If they need a roofer, I got five companies to throw out. Painters, drywallers, got a dozen of each. And yet I can't give them a single decent carpenter that's essentially doing what I was doing in the field. Now why in the world is that? Frankly, it's because carpentry is a tough gig. Carpenters have a lot of responsibilities. Think about it. We live in the age of specialization. The mortgage crisis of 2008 decimated the construction industry. You had mid-size and large construction companies all over America essentially vanish overnight. They disbanded their workforce, and for some years, these people were without jobs. They drifted into other industries, some line of work that wasn't quite so boom or bust. Some of them remained in construction in more specialized, smaller fields, but a lot of them didn't. They were forced to go on to something that seemed more reliable, something that would always be there and would always pay. And of all the factors involved, it's that last word that makes all the difference. Pay. Why aren't there as many carpenters around as there used to be? Frankly, because it doesn't pay that much. And yet our responsibilities as carpenters are vast. Painting and drywall are simpler trades. Now, that does not make them easy. I've hey now, I'm not a mutter. I'm not even a fodder. These artists possess a skill and talent way beyond what I could ever achieve. I've always said there's an art form to both. Plumbing, on the other hand, is very complex. There's a lot to learn, things have to be done right, and there's a small margin for error. But there are much better training programs associated with plumbing. I wouldn't call plumbing complex. Uh, more so, it requires a strong knowledge of building code, uh, much like any other technical trades, such as electricians or HVAC. Uh, but not trying to throw flack at my plumbing friends here. No, no, see, the only thing stopping me from being an electrician is my horrible math skills. Whereas plumbing, all you really got to know is shit rolls downhill 
at approximately a quarter inch per foot and avoid turbulent flow so your fitting doesn't burst five years down the road. It's, 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 not, it's not rocket appliances is what I'm trying to get at. It's a more regulated industry. And once you know plumbing, it has a more contained job description. In the field, you're probably either roughing in new houses or you're doing repair work on older houses. And the same goes for electrical and HVAC. If you're an electrician, every day is wiring, fixtures, and panels. If you're an HVAC technician, every day is AC units and furnaces. You really get to focus down. And on top of that tighter focus, you get paid. According to Home Advisor, most licensed plumbers make $80 to $130 an hour. In my area, it hovers right around $100. Electricians in my area frequently charge between $70 to $90 an hour. No one bats an eye at that. HVAC technicians, if they're licensed and independent, can easily charge $100 to $150 an hour. And then your carpenter shows up and charges $25 to $50 an hour. That's half or less. And on any given job, we may be asked to do an insane variety of things. Build or repair fences, gates, decks, sheds. We may be asked to frame in new walls or ceilings, to repair rotted joists or structural posts, or to trim out whole rooms or even do custom built-ins. We might hang doors, windows, and cabinets, or run all the siding and exterior trim on your whole house. Along the way, we may fix every little broken handle or missing threshold that you have. And we do it all in my area for like $30 to $50 an hour. And a lot of this is hard, backbreaking work carrying a lot of weight in adverse conditions. We're just a step below the masons who have the hardest, most demanding labor out there, along with the roofers who constantly work in danger of falling. Now 100% with my experience as uh, concrete finishing and then roofing, roofing especially, I spent about six years uh, doing that. You're not thinking much. It's, it's, it's not smart labor. It's, it's dumb labor. But you are breaking your back. It's one of the hardest, hardest things to do. If you got a, a 50 plus year old man working roofing all of his life, he's hard as nails. Don't pick a fight with him in the bar. He will, he, he will win. <laughs> now my point here is not to bemoan how difficult we had it. As I said, I love being a carpenter. It's my chosen profession. Carpentry is like romantic. It's the most romanticized trade. But when a young person comes up to me and says, I'm thinking about getting into the trades, should I become a carpenter? At this point, I... No. Oh boy. If I was slightly more book smart, I'd be out of my trade so fast uh, for exactly the same reasons The Honest Carpenter has. We don't make enough money. The work is backbreaking. I'm 25 years old and I'm constantly in pain. Uh, honestly, if I were a smarter man, I'd like to see myself in engineering. I've always told the young kid on the job site, if you were smart, go become a tech electrician, uh, get your plumber's ticket, go go to architect school, be an elevator technician. Like for crying out loud, just get out of general contracting while you can. <laughs> I feel obligated to look them in the eye and say, no, don't do it. Go get your plumbing certification, your HVAC training, do your two to four year apprenticeship, learn as much as you can. And as soon as you can, go out on your own. Make those big bucks, put it away. You play your cards right as a plumber, you can die a multi-millionaire and have plenty of money along the way. Don't be like me. Don't blow your knee out at 36 and have to rely on a YouTube career to finally have the money to pay to fix it. That's the reality of our jobs and the trades. We will have to sell to some degree our bodies and our health for money. That's the hard truth of the matter. Now, many of you out there might be watching this and saying, you're not helping anything right now. Here, I'm supposed to be an advocate for the trades, and I'm telling young people it's gonna destroy your body and leave you poor. But I'm not actually talking to them. I'm talking to you, the viewer, who hires tradespeople for work. You're the one who's holding the checkbook. And the message I have for you might actually be a little bit scarier. Because I only see one way out of this labor shortage crisis. In the future, there's a good chance that you're gonna have to pay more for everything. The old timers, like my concrete buddy, they're aging out. They can't work forever. In the next generation who needs to fill their shoes, why are they gonna come do it? Organizations like the National Association of Home Builders wanna advocate for people to get back into the trades. Okay, I gotta slightly disagree with the idea of just giving us more money. Uh, while I certainly would love to charge more, I also have to know my limitations. Remember these photos? 
the day I charge 200 bucks an hour is the day I put myself at risk of making these exact same mistakes. I charge based on what I'm doing and I based on how much knowledge I have in that particular field. Uh, if I'm not 100% confident in my abilities at a certain task, I'm going to hire a sub trade that and give him most of the money because he, he deserves that money. He put the time and effort to learn and get good at that specific task. Uh, I'm, I'm not saying carpenters and GCs, you know, we're not worth more money. For, far from it, far from it. If you're a carpenter that does a really great job building walls, but your trim work is something to be desired, or vice versa, your finishing skills are beyond legendary, but you don't have uh, you don't have the skills to in install a proper header. Like maybe you just don't know, you know. You really shouldn't charge accordingly, or so you should charge accordingly. Is a GC or a carpenter worth the extra money? Uh, well, I'd say it depends. Uh, absolutely, there should be a raised ceiling on general contracting. If you're <clears throat> Absolutely, there should be a raised ceiling on general contracting. If your skill level really is that high, then absolutely yes. Charge that 200 or 300 bucks an hour. You are absolutely worth it. For the bulk of us, even the older ones, we should be realistic on what we offer. Anywho guys, thanks for watching. If you liked it, leave a thumbs up. If you didn't, leave a dislike. I will try to make more videos down the road, but honestly right now, it's, it's just another hobby for me. Thanks. Peace.